Today we are going to talk about water ecosystems. Water ecosystems can have fresh water, salt water, or both. Fresh water ecosystems include lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams. This picture is of a fresh water ecosystem. This is a lake that is actually in West Virginia, which some of you have probably been to before or at least heard of. And this is actually in Summersville. This is Summersville Lake. This picture is of a pond that's also in West Virginia. It is also considered a freshwater ecosystem like a lake is. This picture is of another freshwater ecosystem. And if you can tell in the background, there is a building. And this building should look kind of familiar to you all. It is actually the capital of West, of West Virginia. And it is located in Charleston, West Virginia. And the body of water that you see is called the Canal River, which we actually have close to here too. But this is a picture of it in, and it's the West Virginia. And it is also a freshwater ecosystem. Rivers are considered fresh water. This picture is also from West Virginia. It is located in Thurmond, West Virginia, and this body of water is called a stream. A stream is also considered a freshwater ecosystem, just like the lake, the river, and the pond. Lakes and ponds are water that are surrounded by land. Also, lakes and ponds are still bodies of water. This means that the water stays still, it's not moving like you would see in the ocean or a river. Rivers and streams, such as this one in the photo, are moving bodies of water. You can tell from the picture that the water is moving. Like when you would go whitewater rafting or even when you're fishing sometimes, you know, you can see that the water is moving. It's not a still body of water. Rivers and streams are moving. Rain or melting snow supplies water for most lakes and rivers. Another type of a freshwater ecosystem is a wetland. A wetland is low land that is covered by water at least part of the year. Water flows very slowly through wetlands and they're also called rivers of grass. This is a picture of a wetland that is actually in West Virginia as well. It is in Canaan Valley, West Virginia, which is in northern West Virginia. You can tell from the picture how low the water is to the ground. You can see the grassy land that is around it and this is how you conclude what a wetland is. This picture of a wetland is actually from really, really close to here. It is in Winfield, West Virginia, which is just a couple miles up the road for you guys. And it is called Winfield Wetlands. And I actually been there before. When I was in middle school, probably my sixth or seventh grade year, we took a field trip to the Winfield Wetlands. And it was a very interesting thing to see. I'm sure that you guys will be able to go there in a couple years and you get to look around for animals, record data. It's a very fun science filled field trip. And you just see so many plants and animals that you don't normally see because they are inhabitants of wetlands. You can see that the water is really shallow, just like other wetlands. And it's just kind of, it's neat that we have a wetland that is so close to home. The main things that you'll see at a wetland are trees, grasses and water plants which you have probably gathered from the photos, animals such as fish, bears, and birds live in wetlands as well. The other type of water ecosystem are saltwater ecosystems. Um, you can tell from the name that the water has salt in them. This is what classifies them differently from the fresh water because the fresh water had fresh waters that came from snow and rain like we talked about. The salt water is oceans. You guys have probably been to the beach, 
If not, you've seen pictures of the beach and you know that when you get in the water and you open your eyes, salt will get in your eyes and it burns. That is how you tell a salt water ecosystem. Oceans cover much of Earth's surface. Ocean water contains salt. The ocean is shallow along the shore. Just like at a beach, you would see how it starts really shallow and the farther you go out, the deeper it's going to get. I found that one of my favorite movies, Finding Nemo, is a wonderful example of a saltwater ecosystem. You can tell from this picture from Finding Nemo that clams, crabs, kelp, fish, and coral live there. It's a very, there's so many creatures, so many fish that live in saltwater areas. There's over 275,000 kinds. You can also see from this picture that others, such as seabirds, swim and dive for fish, like in Finding Nemo. These are an example of a good seabird that you would see in saltwater areas. From this picture from Finding Nemo, you can see that the ocean can be very deep. You can't even see down to the bottom of how deep it is. Although the ocean is very deep, most saltwater life keeps close to the top 200 meters of water. Very small animals feed on tiny algae, such as in this picture of algae, that makes food for them. Large fish and whales also live here in the first 200 meters of a saltwater body of water. Bruce, the shark from Finding Nemo, is a large fish that we know as a shark that actually lives near the top of the ocean, whereas you may think he would live at the bottom. Along with the whale that Marlin and Dory run into also lives closer to the top, and it's a huge, huge fish, whales are, and you would think that those may be closer to the bottom as well, but they're actually closer to the top. The bottom of the ocean is deep, it's dark and very cold, and it has very little food. So few animals and fish live here. Many rivers flow into the ocean. Fresh water from the river can mix with salt water from the ocean. Salt marshes can form in these areas. Salt marshes are wetlands that contain special plants and animals. These living things are able to live in salty water and soil. Many plants grow in salt marshes. These wetlands also contain a muddy soup of tiny living animals. Some are too small to see with just your eye. Many kinds of fishes, crabs, and other ocean animals begin their lives in salt marshes.